All right, got a bunch of parts in today. So the over fenders, uh, inner and outer tie rod, and some other minor things here and there also came in. So today I'm gonna be throwing these tie rods in. So I'll show you here in a second. So I've gone with an uh, E90 inner tie rod, which is longer than the E36, and then just a factory uh, E36 outer tie rod. So I've already gone and shortened it by about, I don't know, like an inch, maybe half an inch. And I'll see if that works. But before I put the tie rods back in, I'm going to finish these control arms by getting these lollipop bushings out of there and then pressing in these uh, offset ones I have laying around. So these are gonna improve the caster in the front end and which would help with the overall self steer and steering feel when drifting gonna go ahead and take the stock bushings out of these control arms and pop those new ones in then i can get to throwing everything in the front end all back together and finalize that and start cutting these things so the best way i find to take these things out is to just use like some kind of jaw puller this is just a two jaw puller and then i put a 17 socket on it and then this way you can just pop it out like that and once that's out all you have to do is pop this metal ring that's on the edge here so I usually just uh, cut it or you, if you put in a press you can just press it out by just make a quick cut and then pop that out and then for the rubber here again you can just cut it and then just slide it off Now a big problem with the offset poly bushing is that sometimes it might spin so then you get a huge caster adjustment and you don't realize it. So what people usually do is they'll drill a tiny pilot hole and then put a screw into the bushing and that way it won't be allowed to spin left or right. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little hole here and then once the bushing is in we'll put a, a small screw in there just to keep it from spinning around. facing inside towards this uh, tab. Don't make sure it's not flipped uh, the other way around. Again, you want it facing on the inside to have it mounts in the car. Give it a quick tap. There you go. Now we're gonna find the small screw that fits in this hole and I'll get that in there. There we go, so now there's no chance of this ever spinning. And ready to go back in the car. Got the control arms and everything else in. As you can see, and now I'm just finishing up this uh, inner tie rod install. Once again, these are the E90 inner tie rods, and I cut them a little bit. So the E90 tie rods are super long, so you do need to cut them a little bit. So I'm gonna start just tightening everything, check over the torque specs, try to do an eyeball alignment quickly, and then I will start chopping the front fenders and we'll see if I can get the front wheels to fit before we move on to the back.
All right, it's not the prettiest cut, but it'll do. So I'm gonna mount these temporarily using these Clico pins or clips. And then we'll see if I need to make any more adjustments. I might actually throw the wheel on and see if it hits anywhere else. That way I can trim those sections. But these are a good way to mount body panels without actually having to permanently rivet or screw them in. So I'm gonna start mocking this up, drilling some holes, and then we'll hold it on there using these Clicos. Probably the worst fitting over fenders that ever I've ever put on, but you get what you pay for. So I have two pins in on each corner, or one on each corner, sorry. You can kind of see how it's gonna look. I was hoping they would be a little wider, but they're not, so I might have to uh put some spacers behind the bottom just to push it out a bit probably put another one here and then one on each corner and then here hopefully it makes it fit a tiny bit better but i was kind of trying to match the body line and it's not working out too well these are the cheapest ones you can get on ebay i'm pretty sure so like i said you get what you pay for the other overs on my coupe are click tuning and those fit decently not too much modification needed borrowed the wheel from the sr car as you can see from the front and rear gap the caster is in the correct position thankfully so we're a little forward there and we don't hit anything which is good especially with such a big tire but it does rub on the bumper a little bit but it doesn't hit anywhere else so even even on both sides full lock the adapter you know it spins freely no issues even with all the angle doesn't seem close at all on the inside obviously things change under full compression when it's on the ground but from what i can see there's tons of space so i'll probably just end up cutting this bumper because I don't think I'm running it. I might actually grab my M3 bumper up there because it's already trimmed a bit from my uh, other car. If I do end up leaving this bumper on for because of time or whatever, I'll just trim it. Who cares? It's just a stock bumper. So now that this is all good and I don't have to cut anything, I'm gonna start popping these uh, rivets in and pulling the Clego pins out. I also ended up maxing out the front camber because I feel like it just needed a little more to fit so it's not poking so much. I'll do all the exact same things on the other side. I'm not gonna show it. You know, max the camber, pop the over fender on, chop the front fender. So I'm gonna show the rear half now. Need to cut this, mount it to the quarter, mount it to the door because it's a two piece over get all the coilover stuff in there. So I mocked up the rear over fenders and looks like it fits really bad. So I'm gonna have to make some modifications to this panel, probably uh, put some spacers on the top and kind of shift it around and make it fit with this because this is way off. And then this is also off. And the gas, gas door, I had to do a lot of trimming just to make it something will work. And obviously, you know, nothing lines up, but like I said before, I guess you get what you pay for. So gonna mark out where I need to cut now, now that I have this section semi-mounted and then gonna go ahead and chop this part out, bend up the metal and either weld or just seam seal the upper gap, I'm not too concerned. First cut made, now I gotta make slits and hammer it up and then seam seal it or weld it up here. You can really see where the hidden rust is. Goes to show no matter what it looks like on the outside, there is 
probably always rust hiding underneath it, especially here in Canada. Now I'm just gonna chop all these ends off and then I'll probably just seam seal the all the opening part. Oh yeah, and then finish cutting this little section too. The sides all sealed up. Just put some seam sealer coats on top of the uh, cut section so it's all sealed up. No smoke's gonna get through. Put a quick coat of paint on top so it doesn't rust if there's any metal or whatever. Got the other side cut up. Gonna do the same over there. Get that sealed up and painted. Over fender is on. So the problem that I'm dealing with here is that this is not even close to lining up. So I've already gone and put a nut here, but the Clico isn't long enough. So what the plan is, is two nuts to space this section out and then one on the bottom here. So it kind of matches. You can see from the side profile, the body line isn't horrible. It is off a little bit, but it isn't horrible. But the main issue is this, obviously, right? So I'm going to play around with the spacers and alignment and things like that. I've already shifted it over a couple times. So I'll just put a time lapse on. And then when that's finished, we'll go from there. Okay, so here is the closest I could get this to fit. Still not perfect, it's off by a little bit. Now the body line's even off, but it's not getting any better than that. This, I put spacers here and there, and I messed around with as much as I could. I trimmed the inner skin, I trimmed down here. So yeah, just, uh, just a garbage, um, garbage molding for these overs. It, it was cheap, so obviously you can't complain too much, but oh well. I hope the other side is a lot better because this was, even after all this uh, modification, the fitment is still a little off. Which the fronts were bad too, but I managed to get them to fit all right, but these are just way off. I'm going to slam the rest of the rivets in and then do the other side, and we'll continue off uh, on the suspension. Just a quick spring and shocks change and we'll pull it outside and see what it looks like with the wheels on. Look at that. Whoever owned this car, need, uh, oil spray does not mean just spray a bunch of oil on your car. I don't understand who does this. Like it's not, it's not from the car, it's just somebody sprayed 10 gallons of oil underneath it. Here's a pro tip if you're putting shocks on by yourself. Tighten it up so max preload and then sit on the caliper. Okay, in the air unloaded, it's not too bad, a little high. So if it drops down from this, that would be perfect. I'll uh, leave it at this height. I'm gonna do the other side and then put the fronts on and get the car on the ground. 
here's the car through the bumper and front wheels for my drift car on it as you can see the fitment's pretty decent and the rear is not bad obviously once the camber arms come in i'll dial out some more camber because this instance is still stocked right now and i like to run as close to zero as possible for tire wear Yeah, so overall not too bad for a car I just slapped together. So yeah, uh, I guess that's it for this one. The next video, uh, I need to do the hydraulic handbrake and the dual caliper. Once I do those and put the welded diff and camber arm in it, it'll be ready to go. I have a spare bucket seat I'll throw into the driver's side and then uh, I have another wheel I'll put in, put in there. Other than that, it'll just stay stock engine, stock interior. Might do a couple things on the ECU to just give it a bit more power, but that's just basic tuning, OBD2 tuning, so nothing too crazy. So have the M3 mirrors. Uh, I don't think I'll put any other aero, but those for sure I'll throw on there. So if the camber arms and stuff do show up for this thing before the weekend, I'll probably take it drifting on Saturday. So yeah, if you want to see that, I guess uh, subscribe and wait for the next video.